Pace has dropped on Soccer's Morning Show here on the SDH Network. John, here you there. Thanks for dropping by, as you always do. So how's your research going this morning? Beat two, three, four. We'll get into it, and uh, there's plenty to discuss. Morning, Alex. We'll, we'll get into the uh, the new report, and that's what it is so far. But since it is a tier A number one S source, we all went scurrying this morning trying to find out more about an Uzbeki forward. And we'll get into that this morning. We'll also get into what uh, the other rumors are and other reports from clubs that are up the freeway. And there were some interesting ones there. We'll get into that. And anything else that's come across in the gossip rumor and innuendo front when it comes to other players and your favorite teams. Because remember, the Prem, as Jason says it, is uh, starting up this weekend. So, Plenty to talk about there as well. And there are some other things in the lower divisions that I kind of wanted to get into this morning with uh, just news, newsy kinds of things. And they're both attached to League One in Lexington and in northern Colorado and Windsor. And one is intriguing for one reason, and the other is intriguing for the wrong reasons. So we'll get into that in League One. Uh, this morning as well. So we are we are open for business so we can discuss things all across the board. Opening kickoff, wasting no time there because, well, you know, it, it is opening kickoff. And when, when someone is uh, is yelling, you know, we, we kind of have to bring it to the fore. But I will say this. I did not, as we get into opening kickoff, I did not grab said audio because it would have taken me about nine years to get all the bleeps in. Opening kickoff brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. That's your QR code for those of you who are watching us, however you are watching us. It's on our YouTube channel. It's on Twitch or it's on the 280 character app. Don't forget, use the code soccer down here 15 when you wrap up your day and you wrap up your, your shopping cart. At Kickoff Coffee and KickoffCoffeeCO.com, they in turn take 10% reinvested in youth games, youth initiatives, stuff that they have earmarked as cool, quoting our buddy Carlito. And it is Kickoff Coffee and KickoffCoffeeCO.com. Obviously, I'll get into uh, our friends from uh, Alliance Nurse Corps with the other QR code that you try to block when I'm doing that promotion. If this was your, if this was your coach, how would you feel? Audio came out, and it's been kind of floating around for a couple of days, and the stories are now being written in print form about Vincent Company and how he, in one instance, is uh, was running the ship at Burnley. And let's just say the met- metaphors were colorful and the man was on a roll. So what I'm going to do is explain the situation of the video that was released on a, on the behind the scenes uh, you know documentary involving Burnley last season as they were on their way to being relegated. And I'll describe the situation for you. As I said, I thought about pulling down the audio and we would have been the sum total of 4 minutes in before the explicit rating would have come out. And I mean it was a good run. But it would have taken me forever to to go bleep, 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 bleep. And it might have been funnier or more reactionary if we had just let it go. But it was, I mean, it was, man was yelling. So here's the the situation. Vincent Company was not happy with, with uh, with his club. Understandably so, considering how much of a perfectionist he is and how much he demands out of his players. And I think that what we see from Vincent Company is someone who has a certain level of self-expectation as a player and that is transferring into his expectations as a coach. So documentary is uh, is rolling. And, you know, right now, Company, we know he's gone from Burnley to Bayern Munich. So the -the behind-the-scenes documentary from his time at Burnley is out. And so Mission to Burnley on Sky had a clip within the documentary about uh, about company. And he ends up 
swearing at Johan Berg Gudmundsen 15 times in less than 60 seconds. Literally. 15 times in less than a minute. So here's here's the quote. And obviously I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of sugarcoat it and kind of shave it a little bit. Quoting company. And he's, he's yelling. And uh, Johan uh, Berg Gudmundsen, he calls Joey. Quote, Joey, don't effing test me. Do not effing test me. Enough of the effing moaning. Enough of the effing moaning. Play effing football. You've got to effing work for everything. Effing play. How many times do I have to tell you? Stop effing moaning. Then Goodmanson, hearing all of this from company, goes, I just said, can we finish the, that attack? Company, who's on a roll, continues, no, you're moaning about everything. Goodmanson asks, Goodmanson asks, what have I moaned about today? Company tells him, body language is effing-ish, and I'm not accepting it. Play, effing hell, man. Then it kind of calms down for like a second and a half. Company then goes back to Goodmanson, yelling, it's effing life or death, effing play. Company eventually stops shouting at Goodmanson and instead yells at himself, kind of goes, you know, effing, I've had effing enough of this. And so that was the rant. Most of it toward Johann Berg Goodmanson, some of it to himself. And, and once again, because it's a clip, obviously, you know, we, we don't know the, the whole context of the situation, but that was the clip that was released. So my question for all of you is if you had a manager that was that tightly wound, and those are the words I'll use, what would you think in this day and age if your favorite club and, and I mean it could be it could be domestic it could be you know overseas what have you if your club had a manager that was that colorful with his metaphors at practice what would you say what would you say do you want a guy like that do you want a guy who's that fired up do you want a guy who is that tightly wound, a guy like that who in a situation at Burnley is trying to fight for survival for the club. Like I said, we don't know what time of the year that particular exchange was. Was it when they were really fighting relegation? Were they trying to get out of the relegation zone? Were they that close to jumping out of it? The context in the clip is missing. But if you had a coach, if you had a manager that was that fired up, what would what would you do? What would you say? It's like okay, is that that's just who he is, or is that kind of uh, singling out not the kind of guy that you want in this day and age? And like I said, we don't know the context of the clip, but we do know that in a sixty second clip, Vincent Company let Johann Berg Goodmanson have it with both barrels, and it was about as blue as you can get. And I and to hear me read the particular clip, you know, it's I would I legitimately was torn. Do I run this clip because it has so many f bombs in it? Do I just let it ride? Do I not bleep it out? If it's bleeped, it's funnier. I will admit that when you bleep something as many times over and over and over, you can't help but start to giggle about it. But you're going in there, and it's like okay. You know, you know, can you dial it back a little bit? Can, you know, maybe. I mean, I get it. You know, you, you kind of sit there and you want to kind of go, you, you duck your head. But in this day and age, would you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Pars is not wrong, by the way. Uh, if I play certain words, uh, <laughs> yeah, pay it to the swear jar. Balance is pretty strong. I mean, and now, Pars, the question is, when it comes to the, the SDH swear jar, is it something that, that we have to we have to come up with the parameters here? If I allow 
for colorful metaphors to be disclosed, obviously that's on me. If Jarrett or Nick says something on the air as a host or a correspondent, and they go in that direction, they're the ones ultimately responsible for it, I would say, because they're the ones who said it, even though me here as the host, I know that you sit there and say, well, you let them do it, so it's your dollar. So, yeah, we have to come up with the parameters for the now, now that you have broached this subject. Now that you have broached this subject, we now have to come up with the parameters for the SDH swear jar. And at the end of the season, the end of the calendar year, we will come up with a a charity of choice. And we'll do this. All right. So declaration. All right. I'm making a declaration right now. August 13th, 2024. I am making a declaration. And so... Let's see. Is do I have any piece of music that would fit? Uh, no. Actually, tell you what. We'll just go here. Okay. Declaration. From this moment forward, henceforth, here on the morning show. And I thank I thank Pars for for kicking the tires on this. We need to keep a running tally of explicitness and we have to determine who is ultimately responsible for paying the fines into the SDH swear jar for these situations at the end of the calendar year we will tally up all of the swears and we will donate it to a charity so SDH will turn swears into good at the end of the calendar year all the money in the swear jar goes to a charity and we'll do that so we now have to come up with somebody who's going to keep a tally of all the swears between now and the end of december so it's about four and a half months worth of swearing and like i said we'll come up with a charity for the sdh swear jar from this moment forward here on the morning show you cuss it's a dollar you can preemptively put dollars in the jar if you want you can put a five or a 10 or whatever into the SDH swear jar and give yourself a little bit of leeway. But from this moment forward here on the program, we will have an SDH swear jar and the end result will be donation to a charity from SDH and the morning show at the end of the calendar year. See what you started, Pars? That's a hell of an idea. So swear jar is now, swear jar is now for, for the, uh, the doing of good. So there you go. Um, All right. So from this moment forward, swearing goes to the swear jar, and we find a cause and donate it at the end of the year. Um, Four card, interesting question. Four card wants to know if comments count, only if I post them on the air and read them. Twitch pitch kind of, you you have your own guidelines and guideposts. So what I would say is if all of you, want to to cuss in the Twitch pitch because you've either got to be watching on Twitch or, you know, however you want to uh, take a peek at it. If, you, if you're looking in the Twitch pitch, that's just written word. I would have to sit there and be so overwhelmed by that written word and so impressed by the rant that I would have to post it, then it would be a dollar in the swear jar. So Twitch pitch, you kind of are, you're, you're in your own set of, of guidelines and, uh, you know, you, you have your own bill of rights, basically. So Twitch pitch, you have your own bill of rights. If I go into the Twitch pitch and pull out a comment and post it and read it, then it's a dollar in a swear jar, and I'm ultimately responsible for that. So, yeah, you guys can, you know, because, I mean, look, you look at what Shooter does in the Twitch pitch. I don't read it on purpose because that would be dollar, 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 dollar. That'd be like five bucks in 20 seconds from me to the swear jar. So in, in times past when Shooter has done something, I don't read it. I laugh, but I let the Twitch pitch read it on its own. So I think because if it was true comments for card, uh, you know, the, the charity of choice would end up being multiple charities and it would end up being multiple donations across the board. So no, Twitch pitch has your own bill of rights. You have your own set of behaviors and mores, but I would have to go in and read it. And then it would be a dollar from me into the swear jar. So. That's where, that's where we are. Uh, okay. Uh, so if you had a coach like Vincent company on a rant like that, 
then would you mind? So I guess that was my big question across the board. Rich is like, I thought the fines were for my food takes. That might just be a straight 10 or a 20, depending on how outrageous it is. But then we'd have to figure out who gets to judge the food take. Is it Nick? Is it Mike? Is it a collective sitting there and pointing at me and going, no, no, no? It might have to be Nick on the food take. If I have a food take, then it might have to be Nick saying, yep, that's a that's a dollar. And so, and yes, PARS, now we need a Google sheet so we can track it by person and date. Or just, you know, or just tally mark. I mean, I probably, because I'm the host, it probably would end up being me with the most because I would be the one saying them the most, unless it's Jarrett, and then we'd really have to go ding, 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 ding. See, I need that too. I mean, we need like a bell or something for uh, when uh, there's a dollar in the jar. You know, when Clarence gets his wings, you you hear that on the Christmas tree. But we need some kind of a uh, we need some kind of a notation uh, for for any kind of dollar into the jar. So we'll keep a, we'll keep an ear out for that. But yeah, we're now going to need a spreadsheet. See what kind of trouble you guys have caused in the morning. We're going to need a spreadsheet. We got to figure out parameters for cussing and bleeping and all of that stuff. But it's for a good cause. So there we go. Um, well, and pars is like anything that can't be said on radio can't be said. I mean, it, uh, until after nine o'clock, because then you get into safe harbor, nine o'clock PM, not AM. Because if, if we just decided to abandon safe harbor at nine o five in the morning, we'd be out of the blocks cussing. But, uh, but yeah, after safe harbor for SDH PM, you know, nine o five PM Eastern time, then we'd be okay cussing. So that's where we are. All right. So like I said, my biggest question was whether or not you guys would be bent out of shape with your favorite club if your manager was that way because that was it that was a hell of a lot of bleeps going in one direction and like i said we don't know the context of the clip and we don't know uh you know what what was going on in the world of burnley at the time that caused vincent company to be so damn fired up but like i said i was just curious you know i was just curious as to whether or not people would be bent out of shape if their manager was absolutely just raging and had moments like that. And I mean, Vincent Company, the clip is out there. Company was screeching. I mean, it was, it was like, he was finding, he was finding octaves that, you know, weren't readily available. And so, yeah, he was in, he was in full screech. So, um, you know, like I said, I was, I, I was wondering what uh, what you guys thought about that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it was like, a, was it a one-time rager? Don't know. So we'll see. Uh, and so four card, the level of outrage dictates the fine amount. Uh, so, <laughs> Modiflo, what about a John Reed's an irrelevant comment metaphoric jar? But that's a fun comment, though, Modiflo. But I'll have to remember, irrelevant comment, metaphoric. Uh, metaphoric, irrelevant comment. So there we go. Yeah, the seven swear words, the Carlin seven would be automatic. Uh, and, and Abby would be if the rage went public. She would not be happy about uh, that kind of an outburst with, from, her, from her favorite, from her coach of the moment. So, uh, so there you go. Okay, like I said, that was just me being curious this morning. So that's opening kickoff brought to us by our friends. Yeah, the oh, so the jar is metaphoric. Okay, so the jar is metaphoric, not the comment itself. Thank you, Modiflo. Uh, that's opening kickoff brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. And uh, there's your QR code for those of you who are hanging out with us and can see what's going on live, either on the 280 character app on our YouTube channel or on the Twitch pitch. And once again, use the code soccer down here 15 on the checkout because then you get 15% off your purchase. Kickoff Coffee then takes 10%, reinvest it in youth games, youth initiatives, stuff that they have earmarked as cool at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. All right. And so once again, as always, over my shoulder, thanks to our friends at Alliance Nurse Corps. I will try and uh, hide it so you don't get the uh, the sheen and can't get to the QR code. Alliance Nurse Corps, over 30 years of experience in helping folks find their new career in the uh, nursing uh, the nursing vein. So hit this QR code if you're looking for a career in nursing. Thanks to Alliance Nurse Corps 
great sponsors and great friends with us here at the SDH Network for all that we do in helping spread the news of the beautiful game. That's your QR code for Alliance Nurse Corps. And the question is, how'd you hear about us? So when you're going through all of the, the questions and answers from our friends at Alliance Nurse Corps, they ask, how'd you hear? You go SDH. Once again, helps them out, helps out the show. So there you go. And uh, so that's the that's opening kickoff this morning. All right. So how's your research going? Just thought I would ask. I think that probably in the, uh, let's say, how do we say this? In the hour and a half, I think, since Fabrizio Romano, a tier A source, tier A, you know, lock it down, dude is plugged in kind of a thing. Since he came out with word about contact involving another individual to try and come in before the transfer deadline, which is tomorrow. We have all been sent scurrying to find out more about Eldor. So Fabrizio Romano, in between his news about Manuel Ugarte and Paris Bruner going to Monaco from Dortmund, uh, all of that news, Manchester City sources denying an agreement with Luis Diaz after recent reports, Strasbourg adding yet another individual to hang out with Caleb Wiley that is not your keeper. It is not Georgi Petrovic. Agreed to sign Ryan Messi for a, a million euro and a half transfer fee, fixed plus add-ons, three-year deal to be signed. Michael Olise is at Bayern. Bruner is a three and a half million euro deal. Sergi Roberto had a press conference after 18 years. He out at Barca. And so, of course, now insert uh, Messi and friends rumor here that they're trying to find a way to get Sergi Roberto at right back. NIL deal, massaging of the salary cap, which I would still love to know how it gets massaged in these situations. Do you sign Sergi Roberto to an NIL deal? Perhaps. We'll see what happens. Keep an eye on that. Because remember, today, Sergi Roberto is leaving Barca. Some of the reports and some of the websites that are tied to Messi and friends and the day-to-day uh, appearance of who's in, who's out, are trying to sit there and go, okay, Sergio Roberto speaks about leaving Barcelona today. Does he go to Messi and friends on a free? Sometime after the closing of the window. So you get to see. Uh Antonio Nusa to RB Leipzig, 21 million from Bruges, plus add-ons. Aaron Juan Basaka to West Ham, Manchester United, 15 million pound fee. Contract valid till 2031. Once again, it's controlling the asset when you do something like that. Seven years spread out. Masrawi Matias to leak to Manchester United as well. So we talk about uh, Mukoko's move to Marseille. Liverpool seriously considering an opportunity to sign Mamardashvili in excess of 30 million euro for Valencia, then loan him out. Chelsea requested Connor Gallagher to return to London on Tuesday, set to book the flight. And so four hours ago, for those of you who are up at 5.30 this morning, or in the five o'clock hour, Eastern time anyway, and might have Fabrizio Romano on your, uh, uh, how do we phrase, o- on your uh, notifications. MLS side Atlanta United approach AS Roma to sign Eldor Shomurodov as a new striker. Negotiations ongoing with good chances to make it happen. So with that word that came from Fabrizio Romano, we all went scurrying to try to find out more about Eldor. And I say Eldor because that traditionally has been what has been on the back of his jersey. So, finding out about Eldor. 29, turns 30 next June. Uzbek center forward. 73 caps for his country. 40 goals. Transfer marked currently lists him at at a value point of 5 million euros. 
joined Roma back in August of 21. His contract expires end of the fiscal year, the, the uh, 25 fiscal year, or the 26 fiscal year, June 30, 2026. So he's got a little under two years left on the deal with Roma. Spent most of his time, and I mean most of his time, as a center forward. But he has been known to play on the left or the right, depending on where he's needed. He's also been an attacking midfielder in a match and also played two matches at right midfield. But most of his time, 164 matches, he has been a center forward. 164 matches, 34 goals, 23 assistances. On the right wing, he scored a goal. That was his second most populated location as a right winger. Eh. But center forward has been where he has spent most of his time. Stats by club started out his uh, professional career at Rostov, 91, 91 games, 18 goals, 12 assists. Uh, Bunyadkor, and I don't know where Bunyadkor is. I imagine it's Uzbek, is uh, Uzbek club. Second most, 21 goals there. Roma, 48 matches, six goals, six assists. Genoa, he's been loaned out a couple of times by Roma to other clubs in Syria. So Roma, 48 matches, six goals, six assists. Genoa, 32, 8, and 2. Cagliari, 24, 3, and 3. Spezia, 16, 1, and 2. 102 total matches in Serie A, 15 goals, 9 assists. Premier League back home, 80 matches, 16 goals, 10 assists, and the Super League at 18 and 8 and 75. He has scored in Russian Cup, Italy Cup, AFC, quali- uh, AFCON, quali- or Asian football qualification, scored in Europa League, Europa League qualifiers, and Champions League qualifier, and, and play out Serie A as well. Career started back in 2014, and he went through uh, the Russian Cup with Rostov, Europa League qualifying, then the pre- uh, Premier League in 2021, then moves to Italy from there. So that's the the statistical breakdown of Eldor. Like I said, Eldor Shamuradov is who is being uh, the tires kicked on, according to Fabrizio Romano. Highest market value was when he was transferred into Roma back in 2021 at 14 million euro. Right now, like I said, listed from his time at Cagliari at 5 million euro, and that's where he is right now. So the rundown, uh, Bunyad Korda Rostov spent time at Rostov, three years there. Genoa picked him up. For nine and a half million back in twenty in uh, October of twenty twenty, then after one season, Genoa picked him up for basically double, nineteen point six. Then Roma loaned him to Spezia. Loan was over. Loan to Cagliari for a loan fee of a million euro. Loan is over, and that was as of June thirtieth. So he is back with Roma, looking for another home for this season, and so that's where we are with Eldor. And much like uh, contributor Nile, I'm following the man on Instagram. And from all indications, he in Uzbekistan is revered the same way that someone like Yonmin Son is revered in South Korea, just to give you a, a, a base of idea there. So um, yeah, this is the, the first time that there have been you know, scurrying for an Uzbek. And trying to find out the, the a possible uh, idea for Atlanta United coming into this season, and once again, if this happens before the end of the deadline, then you're looking at ITC and P1 visa and trying to get that done as quickly as possible. And you don't know now. Once again, you're at the mercy of the U.S. government at this point in trying to get something done in a timely fashion. But uh, you look at Eldor. Modiflo says that Eldor is the national team captain for uh, Uzbekistan. So uh, that's what your that's the the name that is at the top of the list from Fabrizio Romano as of the five o'clock hour Eastern time this morning. So everybody getting up for breakfast, seeing that uh, Eldor's name is out there. And so right now, like I said, Fabrizio Romano comes to the table. You sit there and you're you're going to uh, see what's going on. So now it's time for all of us to sit there and dive in and try and find out as much information as humanly possible about a 6'3 striker who can 
uh, move with the ball at his feet. And once again, at 6'3", you're looking at an individual who presumably can help you out with set pieces to be another piece of tall timber up top. So uh, he can work well with his feet and he can help you out on set pieces and from all indications likes to kind of drift out to the left a little bit. So uh, you have those those opportunities and those chances that could be created with Eldor if he is brought in in, say, the next little bit. But like I said, Fabrizio Romano breaks that at 5.30 in the 5 o'clock hour Eastern time this morning. And so that's where, that's where we're now staring at most of our attention. And looking at, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do a, a, a cursory update and find out if, uh, if Eldor is being discussed with other folks. And it's Eldora Speedway. No, I'm not looking about Eldora Speedway. So uh, all of the, the local stuff, uh, most recently played Calgary, right? 27 goals, 55 caps for Uzbekistan. I got 73 and 40. And uh, as I sit here and try and go, uh, I'm trying to see if anyone else has anything a little bit uh, equally definitive uh, other folks that don't have as many followers are reporting contacts between the two clubs have intensified to find a solution immediately. The deal now appears to be close to being concluded. So there's a there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of uh, hesitation verbs that are attached to that kind of stuff. Uh, possibly, you know, possibly, maybe, perhaps, yeah, you know, that's what you're you're looking at. Uh, Let's see. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm just checking quickly uh, if there's anything else that might be out there separate from what we've heard from Fabrizio Romano and five o'clock this morning. But everything kind of is leaning in that same direction that we are uh, that we're staring at here. That uh, Eldor Shamurodov is in the in the crosshairs of. Uh, Atlanta United from Roma. And so, yeah, everyone seems to be, for the most part, drifting back to uh, Fabrizio Romano and uh, the the highlights from March. Eldor wears 61. He wore 61 for Calgary last season. So you're, you're getting you're getting highlights from Calgary and from uh, from Eldor as we go. So. Highlights in 22 from Roma, highlights in 23 from Cagliari, and you're looking at, uh, let's see, uh, Eldor is called the Uzbek Messi. 190, very flexible, uh, currently involved in the Olympics to represent his nation. So good with the ball at his feet, 6'3", flexible and a striker that can be grabbed so uh because of all of the loans that uh, he has been sent out for and as i sit here and i'm looking at uh, other news other news other news but yeah there's there's highlights out there of him at roma highlights of him out there at calgary and so that's the name july 31st hellas verona had made contact uh, with uh, with eldor from roma so other folks have been uh, kicking the tires, but according to Fabrizio Romano, this looks like it's going to be close to getting done. So we'll keep an eye on that, and we're all, we'll all be sent scurrying to look at highlights of, of Eldor, how he works in the air, how he uh, is as a center forward. Does he drift to the left and try and draw attention to himself to create opportunities for others inside the six and inside the 18? So uh, everybody's going to go get Russian for tape. R U S H I N apostrophe Russian for tape, and looking at uh, the the Uzbek the Uzbek center forward for Roma uh, Eldor. Like I said, Eldor were sixty one for Roma, so we'll see what happens. But Fabrizio Romano thinks that this is going to be done, and it's close to being concluded. So we'll see what happens and see what the price tag is, and uh, so we'll see where this goes from here. But yeah, that was that was breakfast this morning. Finding out that Eldor is being pursued by Atlanta United uh, for a striker that continues to be loaned out, who's a part of a, uh, part of a situation at Roma where 
Uh, he's in a log jam and gets loaned out, and he works well with other uh, teams in Syria. So that, there you go. Uh, let's see. So who's in this morning? Morning, Alex. Morning, Abby. And yeah, thank you, Abby. Um, it's amazing. What, Abby's glad I'm feeling better. <laughs> um, <laughs> amazing what that medication will do. And so, yeah, nothing like going to the doctor. Here, take this. And I am better, but not quite 100%. So uh, voice is still a little, you know, as you can tell, I don't quite hit the mute button fast enough, but uh, better. Yes, better relative term. Let's see. Morning pars, morning mod flow, morning unk. Uh, let's see. Morning Derek. Derek is not lurking this morning. So uh, Derek is in from the beginning. Uh, unk, this will be the next topic. What Charlotte's up to. Uh, so let's see. Morning pars, morning rich. Morning four card. Uh, let's see. And so Abby says those who swear, even if they're a guest, should have to put it into the jar, too. I agree. Explicit rating. If you're a guest, you swear it's a dollar in the jar. Uh, morning, Harry. Uh, <laughs> Ong says the charity could be the DP fund. Um, all right. So, yes, Will. Morning. So former Soviet Republic down here. Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely true. Uh Let's see. Morning four card. Morning Abby. Let's see. Morning Mata flow. In the metaphoric jar, Will says I trust Fabrizio, so I think it's happening. A triple plus source. Uh, Unk filibustering the AU section for a guest. Uh, Mata flow. Tom's and Mata flow had a breakdown in the Discord uh, of of Eldor. So those in the Discord then uh, drift to the Discord, and you can look at. Uh, what you see from, I uh, actually tell you what, let me go into the Discord. Let me see what I can grab. And so we'll continue the discussion about uh, about Eldor by the end of the hellos. Uh, let's see. Eh, where was, it's like I had it. It's like right here. Okay. Um, yeah, Will says, you know, I hate being at work. Wisconsin, Bama, and NCAA 25 have some crutes coming. Need to play the game, but work. Come on, man. Badgers need the recruits, according to Will. Um, Unk, why are we looking at distressed assets when we clearly don't need to? Don't know if, I mean, if, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily uh, tag Eldor as a distressed asset. It might be a numbers game, and what you would be doing is you would be paying for I would probably rephrase it maybe as an underappreciated asset inside the Roma family. So that's how that's how I would view it. A distressed asset to me would be, well, and I don't Roma might be needing to clear the decks a little bit to kind of help things out with themselves financially. But I think Roma clearing the decks and our friends maybe at Bordeaux clearing the decks are two different things. What you what you're doing in this case is you're finding someone that fits what you're looking for, but isn't getting the reps with the team that signed him. So I don't know if that qualifies as distressed asset or not, but I think it's more of, of an opportunity to try and find someone who is, uh, you know, who's lined up there. So, all right. So, huh? yes, I'm human. Uh, okay. So that didn't work. That's not good. Um, why? Why? Why is this not working? I feel like Ross all of a sudden. Um, why is this not working? Yes, I'm human. Please confirm you're not a robot. Okay. That's not good. Why is the Discord not letting me log in? All right, I might have to do that off my phone. Okay, so, all right, so the computer's being uh, kind of complainy this morning, not letting me log into the Discord. Um, and Modiflow says, said it elsewhere, say it here. Think he's going to be a good fit should he come. Um, morning, uh, you'll never walk alone. Need signings? Yeah, I do. And uh, 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 you'll never walk alone, 66. I do know who Tranmere Rovers are. I believe I have a jersey in my jersey stack. I absolutely do. Uh, Modiflow. Uzbekistan has a very strong futsal program. Soccer players are a bit more technical than they get credit for. And uh, unless it's a slam dunk, Alex says, why pay a transfer fee when you have two serviceable support strikers need a stud to take the lead? Well, and maybe because, and Alex, at the same time, you know, with uh, Eldor, you know, drifting out to the left, as a part of his strikerness, and you look in the highlights and you see that he has a tendency to go to the left, maybe he ends up being a left winger in Major League Soccer. 
So you still can chase after because, like I said, we went through the number of matches that he's played. Yes, most of the time he is a center forward, but he has spent time on both wings. I mean, obviously the numbers are just astronomical from one side to the other. But uh, at the same time, you know, I, I think that what you're staring at is someone who might be, you know, might be available one way or uh, another. Yes, primarily a center forward overseas, but might be playing left wing here in Major League Soccer. Just don't know. But like I said, he has uh, he has done he has done the work in, in other places. So let's see, Twitch pitch, it's picks of the week, uh, Q and A. Let's see, where is it? So um, where where pray tell notifications notifications. Uh, I have new messages. I know I have new messages. So new messages since 544. Uh, that's 11. Okay, so what? Uh, so now that I'm actually in the Discord, what uh, what topic did you guys put your analysis in, Pars? Oh, and Pars, uh, I now have officially accepted your friend request in the, uh, in the SDH, in the Discord. So uh, sweet tailgate, book club tickets, shenanigans maybe? No. Is it shenanigans? Is that where it was put? No. Okay. So somewhere in here, there is a uh, a rundown in the Discord about uh, early, early thoughts on Eldor. But uh, so we'll see. Uh, Unk is staring at the 50 million DP fund, wondering where it's going. If this is, I think it's a move, first and foremost. Uh, Unk says, if it, this is the move, they need to work on messaging their expectations a little more, a more ab, ab, absolute, uh, ab, accurately. It might be, I think it's a move. Because once again, if you are trying to treat issues on the left, then if uh, Eldor can help you out on the left and you can still chase after a true center forward, somebody at the top of the spear, then you're still once again helping things along one way or the other. Um, yes, Alex, quoting the Beatles this morning. Uh, Bordeaux is not an asset anymore. No, no, they are not. They, they, and that was why I broke this out this morning. It was, it is a, it is a remembrance of the dearly departed. That is why. And that's why I broke this out this morning. Um, let's see. Uh, folks talking about Garth. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, one day left in the window. So the, the biggest thing is, uh, if Eldor is, the other transferred contract based transfer for the uh for the remainder of this window remember you can still uh, grab folks on a free i believe so um but if if this is if this is a move then we'll keep an eye on you know obviously we'll keep an eye on what's going on but you're trying to find folks to help you out so we'll see what happens from there so keep an eye on eldor and we'll keep an eye on the the latest from Eldor, and we'll see what happens there. Um, all right, Charlotte. I know that you guys wanted to talk about Charlotte, and it was an interesting couple of pieces of information that came out of Charlotte, and uh, what Dean Smith and uh, technical director Zoran Carnetta were chasing, and there were a couple of names that were intriguing to say the very least. And, and and I'm going to I'm going to mention them and mention them more to a point. So Charlotte in this window has signed Tim Ream. And you know, Tim Ream locked down at the back, but he's 36. Signed to a two-year deal, I think with an option for a third if I remember correctly. So in theory, Tim Ream could be in Charlotte till he's playing till he's 39 years old. I don't see him going to the end of his contract, but that's just the terms of the deal. Two years with an option for a third. So Tim Ream in. It has now been brought to our attention that Zoran Kernetta has decided that in this window, he wanted to chase after other individuals. One of them was Jamie Vardy. One of them was Jamie Vardy. Basically, Dean Smith and Zorn Cornetta were kicking the tires 
on before the season started, bringing Jamie Vardy over to be a part of Charlotte and their season. Three-letter paper comes out with an article. 37, 18 league goals last year as Leicester secured promotion. So 37 years old, 18 goals. So shortly after winning the championship, Leicester loses Enzo Maresca in Kiernan Jewsbury Hall to Chelsea. Dean Smith offered the opportunity for Jamie Vardy at the age of 37 to come to Major League Soccer. Talking to Tom Bogert and Give Me Sport, Dean Smith revealed, quote, I did text him and see if he wanted to come over to America. I knew that it was going to be hard once he took Lester back to the Premier League. Love his enthusiasm for the game. Does He doesn't train as much as he used to. And he won't get as many minutes as he used to, but if he's used right, he'll be really, really good this season. You saw the goals he scored in the championship last year. Dean Smith coached Leicester for eight games at the end of the 22-23 season as they were relegated from the Premier League, just won two matches in charge left in June of 23, two months after taking the gig. And so he was unemployed for six months, got the gig in Charlotte, where he's won 10 of 27. Vardy is set to begin his 13th season with Leicester. When they open with Spurs on Monday, 136 goals, 307 Premier League matches for the 2016 champs. So Dean Smith decides he's going to kick the tires and he wants to text Jamie Vardy to see if Jamie Vardy's interested. Then, let me see if I can spell it correctly. Then we find out that apparently, in addition to Offers on the table from uh, Gaston Edul is reporting that uh, Giovanni Lo Celso has two offers on the table, one from Real Betis, the other from Aston Villa. Spurs will only agree to let him go on the condition that they sell him. Apparently, Charlotte kicked the tires on Giovanni Lo Celso also. Sources within Villa, by the way, growing increasingly confident of the signing of Lacelso. But it was apparently that Giovanni Lacelso, the tires were kicked on him by Charlotte. So sure, okay, Giovanni Lacelso, why not? Now we'll go ahead and kick the tires on that. Villa, Betis, Spurs want to sell. Charlotte apparently was interested in Giovanni Lacelso. Then the third name was Miggy. And there was apparent interest by Charlotte in Miguel Almiron. And our buddy Lee Ryder at Newcastle with the, the Newcastle Chronicle. We know the history with Miguel Almiron, where on more than one occasion, Miggy was being shown in the shop window to the league that we neither condone, con, uh, uh, promote, or, or uh, discuss here on the show with any great regularity. Al Marone basically said at the time, he's like, I like it here in Newcastle. I'm not interested in leaving. Eddie Howe wasn't interested in sending him to the Saudi Pro. So Miggy stayed. But apparently, Charlotte decided that they wanted to kick the tires and they put in a bid for Miggy. Now, here's what Lee Ryder, the chief Newcastle United writer, Lee Ryder, R-Y-D-E-R, the chief Newcastle writer for the Newcastle Chronicle, the Chronicle Live. Here's what he said about that offer. Headline, Newcastle United reject bid from Miguel Almiron after approach from MLS side. Subheader, Newcastle United have dismissed a paltry offer from Charlotte FC for Miguel Almiron. Paltry offer, and that's by their beat writer in Newcastle about 
wanting Miguel Almiron. Newcastle United, and this is the article. Newcastle United had turned down Charlotte FC's opening offer for Miguel Almiron, insisting he is still deemed an important first-team player. Magpies told Almiron they want him to stay over the weekend and that he was very much part of their plans, with Eddie Howe stating on the record two weeks ago he expected the forward to stay. However, the MLS side have now contacted Newcastle to express their interest in the Paraguay International. United won't offload the 30-year-old on the cheap to create squad space. And Chronicle Live has been told by sources close to the deal that any agreement must make sense for all parties. The MLS club have less than 48 hours to get a deal done with Almiron with the U.S. deadline imminent. Despite the presence of a Charlotte official in the U.K. trying to conduct the deal, and this is last night, local time, an agreement was not deemed close this evening. Managed by ex Aston Villa Norwich City boss Dean Smith, Almiron is admired by the MLS side. But Charlotte face a double challenge to get the deal over the line with Almiron's personal terms, needing to be tempting enough to persuade him to cross the Atlantic again, and a big fee needed to satisfy Newcastle Chiefs too. Almiron has two years left on his current deal and is content with life on Tyneside with his young family. Turned down Al Shabab in January, Hal said two weeks ago. Miggy's been unbelievable for Newcastle long before I came, but also since I've been here, he's been an absolutely pivotal player, a key player. We love him. We love his personality. We love working with him. He's come back with a big smile on his face, so I'm looking forward to working with him again, end quote. Traditionally, Miggy has a smile on his face anyway. So I would have said, okay, then that's just Tuesday. So that was how Lee Ryder, the beat writer, for Newcastle, put all of this in. Why? Why is it? I, I just have this. I just have this thought playing through my head. So, Charlotte sends somebody to the UK. Hey, go to London. The uh, again, find your way to Newcastle. Find your way to Newcastle. You know, look, you look on. You know, you look on. Uh, on orbits, flights are pretty inexpensive. Yeah, go ahead and go. Go go, go to Newcastle, and we'll find out about this Miguel Almiron person. See if he's interested. See if Newcastle's interested in selling him. So you fly over. You're there. You go, you go to Newcastle, and it's like, seriously? Okay. I mean, what it's it's like when someone, you know, literally, it's it's to me, it seems like when you know someone is in the neighborhood, and, and they're uh, they're they're knocking on the door, you know, they they knock on your door, and, and you're going, who is it? Who is it on? Who is it at this late hour? Can't they read the sign at the front of the subdivision that says no soliciting? But you know, you might recognize who it is. You look through the, you look through your, your, your keyhole, or you look through your, you, know, you look through your lens that you have there in the, uh, in the, on the, uh, on the door. But liter- literally, it's one of those where, uh, you know, somebody, somebody knocks on the door. Penny. Sheldon. Penny. Sheldon. Penny. Sheldon. One of those. You know, and, and, you know, it's like, do I really want to answer the door? You know, it's, it's, it's like Sir Minty or something on the other side of the door. You look through, the, you look through your, you look through your window, the, the little lens that you have and you're going, oh, God, Sir Minty is here. What? You know, you open the door. What? Hey, what about Miguel Almarone? And you're kind of staring at him and going, what about it? What well, we're interested. Okay. Well, what, what do you want to do about it? Well, how about, and you dig in your pockets, you know, it's like, okay. Um, okay, well, I've got uh, seven bucks and a, and a Bojangles breakfast coupon. Will that work? Um, No, slam. Or, or well, I don't know if it was no slam, but it might be. 
uh, no, no, thanks for thanks for dropping by. Uh, we'll we'll get in touch. And then you close the door, and then you're like you're up against the door, and you're going. Ugh. But it sounds like Charlotte was intrigued enough. Hey, Miguel Almiron, that'd be great. You go into the subdivision, you, you, like, you, you get past the gate, you see the sign at the front of the subdivision, no soliciting, you go knocking on the door, you know that that's Newcastle's home, you know, and, and hey, well, well, what about Miguel Almiron? Realistically, for something like this to work, it would have to be more than seven U.S. dollars in a Bojangles breakfast coupon by equivalency. And... This is what it sounds like. Of course, you know, Lee, when Lee Ryder says paltry, I'm guessing it was like seven bucks in a Bojangles breakfast coupon. Hey, we'll take him off your hands. We flew all the way over from Charlotte. We're serious. How about that? Okay, great. Cool. Where are you staying? Uh, over here at this at this hotel. You, you know that that hotel's only got like two stars out of five. How'd you get here? Oh, I walked. Needed the exercise. So, by all indications, if you take what Lee Ryder wrote from the Chronicle, the Newcastle Chronicle, Charlotte wanted to come in and lowball Newcastle to try to get Miggy to come back to Major League Soccer. And that apparently didn't go well. I could just imagine what happened after the door closed. You know, you go, you, it's like, no, thanks for coming by. Enjoy the walk back to the hotel. You know, can you call Slam? Then whoever's on the other side of the door inside the Newcastle home in the subdivision starts calling up all your friends. Hey, man, you won't believe what just happened. Somebody from Charlotte just showed up and they wanted to give us like seven bucks and a Bojangles breakfast coupon. I don't know what Bojangles is. But they wanted to give us seven American dollars and a coupon for breakfast someplace from Miguel Almiron. Ha 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 ha. Something like that. Realistically. Realistically. You, you're like, you chase after La Celso. You text Jamie Vardy. And then apparently you want Miguel Almiron for a a seven bucks and a Bojangles breakfast coupon. I mean, I guess you should get points for the the, the college try. What is it that Gretzky said? 100% of the shots you don't take don't go in. You never know until you pick up the phone. But realistically, for something like that to happen, you would have to at least match what Newcastle paid to bring Miguel Almiron over in the first place. Which is, what, high 20s, low 30s? And not $7 in a Bojangles breakfast coupon by equivalency? I mean, look, you got to give Charlotte credit for dialing them up and shooting their shots. Like I said, if you don't try, then you don't know. But apparently they went after LaCelso, who's looking at Betis and Villa. Apparently they texted Jamie Vardy, hey, bro, you want to come over? And then apparently they tried to get Miguel Almaron for a song and a dance and a Diet Coke from Newcastle, where Miggy is happy, A. And B, it would have to be more than the paltry fee that was volunteered, apparently by Charlotte in the first place. So you give Charlotte credit for shooting their shot, considering where they are now in the standings, with defense, defense, and defense. I still think they regress to the mean a little bit by the end of the season, especially if they don't get offensive help. And I don't know if Shvidersky can flip the, sw- the flip the switch for them and be the offense that they're looking for. I still think they regress to the mean a little bit. But you give Charlotte credit for shooting their shot, even though it was pennies on the dollar by all indications. They're trying to get LaCelso, Vardy, 
and Miguel Almarone in house. But yeah, when when the Miguel Almarone story popped up yesterday, and then you look, you you go to your tier S sources in this in these cases of okay, yeah, they're chasing it, but what they wanted to do was you know open their pockets and you know oh here's a you know here here's here's a here's a Ruan from Brazil you know that kind of a thing the transfer window once again shuts down tomorrow in, in major league soccer and obviously between now and the end of that time you are going to uh, end up with a, a lot of names a lot of stuff going on we got to get into League's Cup, by the way. Uh, Giroux, the most handsome man in Major League Soccer, apparently could debut tonight for LAFC in League's Cup. And we mentioned the Revs acquiring Nigerian midfielder Al-Hassan, Al-Hassan Youssef for $2 million the other day. So, in addition to the loan of Talos Magno, signing Youssef for the Revs, Another interesting deal for CF Montreal after they brought in Jaquiel Marshall Ruddy from Toronto for what could be $1.3 million in Garber Bucks. It is a set amount of Garber Bucks and GAM that with escalators can make its way to 1.3. CF Montreal has traded Juan to FC Dallas for up to $150,000 in general allocation money. We all know about Juan from his time at Orlando City and how when he played on the left against Atlanta United, he pretty much got turned inside out and turned into a human yellow card. And then he turned into a human red card, or it should have. From Dallas, Montreal gets 50000 in 2024 GAM. They could get another 100000 in conditional GAM for the 25 season. Been in Major League Soccer since 2019. Six goals, 27 assists, 150 appearances. Orlando City, D.C. United, FC Montreal. So Juan adds depth alongside uh, Emma Tomasi as Giovanni Jesus recovers from his ACL tear. Montreal now have right-back options after bringing in David Bugai and Marshall Ruddy. So Marshall Ruddy in, Juan out. And obviously with the amount of, of general allocation money that Montreal spent, They needed to try to grab some back, so they flipped Juan to FC Dallas. Once again, Montreal 11th in the East, Dallas 11th in the West. So it was a sideways trade in the standings, but you bring in Marshall Ruddy, you ship Juan out. League's Cup, by the way, is tonight. And after last night, Seattle wiped out Pumas at Lumen Field in the round of 16, 4 0 to start things off. You've got. A lot of other action tonight, and it's all the other matchups. So if you are in front of your television screen, all of the other matchups in the round of 16 are tonight. We'll go through juice boxes coming up in just a bit. 7.30 on season pass, Cincinnati and Philadelphia. Rich, what's your gut tell you? What does your gut tell you? What does your gut tell you? That's going to be a fun one. Two teams that truly hate each other. And I think I'm being kind. Two teams that truly hate each other. I would take the under. I would find out what the number of cards is in the juice boxes and take the over. I would be intrigued if they had a camera on the touchline. If they had a camera on the touchline, that to me would be something that I would watch the entire night. Legitimately, I would watch it the entire evening. If you gave me a uh, Curtin Noonan cam, then I would watch that all night long. Just to see the two of them just rail on each other. I think that would be a fun one. If 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 Apple had a production camera or if they had a production value that could be an added value for this particular match, give me a Noonan curtain cam for Cincy and Philly. I want to see what happens. 
but I don't anticipate a whole lot of goals. I anticipate a whole lot of cards. I anticipate it being very chippy at TQL. And it should be intriguing. That's an early match of the night, no question. Columbus at Lower.com at the Death Star is hosting uh, and friends tonight. Messi's missing his 11th straight match because of the injuries that he currently has. And so Columbus right now hosting Messi and friends. Messi might be there in a walking boot, but he will not be playing. And no word on what his recovery is and how long <coughs> how, lo- how long that will be. At Audi Field, man, why why you want to do why you want to do your guests like that? At Audi Field at eight o'clock on season pass, it's Cruz Azul and Mazatlan. Why you want to be that kind of? Why you want to be that kind of a host? I mean, is Audi Field finally fixed? Is the grass manageable, or does it still look and play like it did the one night when Atlanta United went up there and it looked like uh, a PGA Tour event in the fourth round at a par three? Cruz Azul and Mazatlan on season pass at 8 o'clock at Audi Field. That, that is not treating your guests well. I mean, am I, I know it might come down to stadium availability, what have you, but come on. There couldn't have been a better place than uh, Audi Field? Q2 or something like that? Red Bull Arena tonight in Harrison, New Jersey. 8 o'clock, Apple TV on season pass, Unimas 2 to NAFS1. Tigres and NYCFC. That one should also be a fun one. Toluca and Colorado Rapids at 10 o'clock at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Toluca's the home team listed in the program, but they're playing where the Rapids play. So that one's at 10 o'clock on season pass. Club America, your overall number one seed, is playing all caps at Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, home of LAG. So St. Louis City SC is going to play Club America in Los Angeles. And you get uh, LAFC and San Jose. That's at 10.30 on season pass as well. And like I said, tonight at BMO Stadium, it could be, could be the debut of Olivier Giroud. The most handsome man in all of Major League Soccer and the centerfold for the most handsome men calendar of Major League Soccer that they have yet to create, but could and, and as a marketing ploy. So we'll see what happens with those uh, with those matchups tonight. And League One Cup, uh, I think it was Central and South America. Here we go. Yeah, I was uh, trying to find the juice boxes, and it's not listed as a, a U.S. event or an MLS event. Juice boxes, by the way. Crew on the minus side at a minus 133 hosting and friends. And they got the logos flipped on odds portal, which is kind of funny. So crew has the uh, messy and friends logo next to it. And uh, inter Miami has the crew logo next to it. So minus 133 for crew draws a plus 324 and, and friends are a plus 288 in the composite. Cincy in Philly. Cincy's on the minus side at minus 143. Draws a plus 287. Philadelphia Union is a plus 359. So let's let's check the numbers here in the over-under part. Over-under one and a half. Over is a minus 533. (laughs) So they are not anticipating a whole lot here. Uh over under at two and a half is minus 157 and uh, three and a half is uh, so it flips at three so they go from the minus side at two and three quarters over under a three is a plus 103 so they're looking at something two one i don't even think it gets to two one i don't think it gets to that but they're saying that at three is where the number flips from minus to a plus so the over under of three at a plus 103 so that's what you're staring at. Uh, Cruz Hustle, Mazatlan. Man, I'm still, it's, why, it's still Audi Field. Come on, man. Uh, Cruz Hustle, a minus 175, draws a plus 309, and Mazatlan is a plus 437, and they flip the logos there too. So Cruz Hustle now has the logo of the Kraken next to it at Odds Portal, and Mazatlan has the, uh, Cemento Fortaleza has the, 
has the uh, Cruz Azul logo attached to it. So they, they flip those two. But Cruz Azul, a uh, big favorite against Mazatlan, understandably so, at a minus 175. At Audi Field, I think the field might be a bit of an equalizer. I'm not anticipating a whole lot of goals there either. Tigres on the plus side, favored against NYCFC. So Tigres on the plus side, you can get Tigres on the plus at a plus 124. Draws a plus 248, NYC is a plus 202. Toluca favored at Colorado as the home team at a plus 138. Draws a plus 250, Rapids are a plus 179. Club America favored big in Carson, California, to minus 172. Draws a plus 309 and a plus 423 for all caps in that one. And then LAFC, big favorite, wrong logo posted, and it is minus 294 for LAFC. Draws a plus 432 and San Jose is a plus 653. Does San Jose continue to have that run of crazy in them? Are they going to be the team in League's Cup that is wooden spoon material in Major League Soccer but is running around like uh, they don't give an ish about what's going on and they're just uh, going complete and total uh, Leroy Jenkins and, and making sure that uh, uh, making sure that they don't care? It's, uh, this, is, this, is, this is San Jose in League's Cup. Leroy no doubt about it. They they are playing that way in League's Cup right now. So do they continue to do this, or does their run end tonight? That's the big question. So uh, that's the late game on season pass. So everybody's on season pass tonight, even the crossover game at 8 o'clock that's on FS1, 2 to NA and Unima. So everything's on season pass tonight. Seattle has made it to the round of eight, and they are waiting to see who their opponent is. Uh, as they go forward, looking at the bracket, you get to see how everything gets laid out here. So it is the winner of Club America and St. Louis City up against Toluca and Colorado Rapids. Seattle advanced with that 4 0 win. They get to take on the winner of LAFC in San Jose. Initially thought it would have been LAG, but Seattle knocked them out. So Seattle gets the winner of LAFC in San Jose. Crew and and friends, winner of that one gets the winner of Tigris and NYC. Then the winner of Cruz Azul Mazatlan gets the winner of Cincinnati and Philadelphia. That's the right-hand side of the bracket. For those of you that filled out your brackets in League's Cup, you're a braver person than I am, and I probably would have just completely and totally blown my bracket to shreds. But anyway, so that's uh, that's what you're staring at with League's Cup. So. Let me get back into the comments after uh, we were uh, looking at all of the things. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, we talked about Modaflow. Uh, let's see. Alex, unless it's a slam dunk, why pay a transfer fee when you have two serviceable support strikers and need a stud to take the lead? Um, and uh, let's see. Going further down, further down. What did I miss here? Uh, Let's see. Uh, everybody's talking about the the international flags and the possibility if uh, if Eldor makes his way in that Abby is going to have to find an Uzbeki national flag for making Eldor feeling right at home. Uh, see now, you know. See, this would have been a dollar for me. I think. Well, no, I don't think it would have been a dollar. Sorry, uh, four card F Charlotte. No, that's not a, that's not a dollar. I'm calling it right now. That's not a dollar. Uh, Jordan. Jordan, welcome in this morning. We're talking about a, bo- a bunch of different things. Um, so uh, let's see. Modaflow. <laughs> Moda, Modaflow says, uh, don't make me laugh. Um, you know, Modaflow just doesn't like the front office and the owners, and he uh, doesn't like the city minus his sister and Jess and Willie P. I think that I think that's a safe play, Modaflow. I, I think that's a safe play. Um, let's see. Uh, Abby wants to know, and this is a question that I'm going to have to give to Jason. When are the new logo SDH Network stickers going to be made available? That's a good question. So uh, I will have to ask Jason about the stickers 
and see what's uh, and see what's going on with the stickers and, and everything. So we'll see. Uh, we will see about stickers. And uh, but yes, uh, Rich, the reason that uh, the the reason that I am wearing this today is because of what did not happen with with uh, Bordeaux, and they are now in the fourth division of the French football pyramid because the deal with Fenway Sports Group fell through. Fenway Sports Group kicked the tires, and they're like, nah. And so they were going to be in the third division. And actually, they were going to try and stay in the second division, but they needed a two-week extension to try and get funding to make payroll and make all their expenses for the year. They couldn't do it, and they were going to be relegated to the third division, and then by mutual agreement, they were like, look, we'll just go ahead and start at the bottom. We'll go back to the fourth division, and we'll try it again. So that is why uh, I thought today I I would wear – this is a a, a recognition for those – who have passed uh, passed us by and are having to start over, and so it is a tip of the it is a tip of the cap to uh, our friends at Bordeaux. Um, let's see, yeah, Derek, random salesperson shows up at your door, the worst. I wonder, you know, it, if a random salesperson, you know, random salesperson shows up at Newcastle's door. Like I said, it might have been Sir Minty. I don't know. But is that a random sales? Do you recognize the individual? If you're if you're in Newcastle House, do you recognize the individual on the other end and just kind of answer the door anyway, or are they wearing like uh, like Charlotte gear or something and you answer the door, um, or, or are they knocking on the door and going, is it Newcastle's anybody home? You know, it's Charlotte. You know, are you knocking on the door saying that you're Charlotte FC? Is, is that what you're doing here in this case? Hey, we got a question for you. Yeah, can you come to the door real quick? One of those. Something like that. But yes, random salesperson shows up at your door the worst. And, and then you can add to that, Derek. Uh, I would add to that random. That's not a poll, but it, it's <laughs> the the individuals <laughs> that... Um, they want you to sign like a petition or something. And then those folks, I would add to the group uh, of the, the the random, like literally when your subdivision up front, like you, you literally have in the subdivision, the sign when you turn in and maybe the folks that are walking the street, they don't quite see it. And they just go down into the subdivision anyway, right there at the beginning of the street. No soliciting. Makes me wonder, in this case, if Newcastle was in that subdivision that said no soliciting. And uh, Sir Minty or whomever went down the road, saw the Newcastle house, wanted to knock on the door anyway. And Newcastle's like, oh, what do they want? You know, banging on the door. Okay, I'll answer. Just answer and maybe get rid of them. But, yeah. So uh, maybe that was what happened. But yes, random salesperson showing up at your door, random person trying to get you to sign a petition or trying to get you to be interested in something that you're not. Didn't you read the sign like walking into the subdivision that said no soliciting? Oh, no. Oh, sorry. I didn't see that. No, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to bother you. And then it turns into like this 20 minute conversation about uh, so. So. You know, so with your house, you know, they want to fix your they want to fix your gutters or your windows or whatever. So and then they try to ask a question. So who's in charge of all the decision making and who, you know, how what's a good time to call? And uh, can I write your name down to, you know, so I can you know show that I was here? Those kinds of things. One to the other to the other. We get those. We get those folks. Exactly. So. Uh, Alex, hope Charlotte breaks the bank for him. Uh, they, they doesn't sound like they were trying. Um, and then Alex, Alex is being very prudent. He says we should we should make fun of Charlotte after you pass him in the standings. In the meantime, silencio. Modaflow works 100 percent of the time when it works. That's very Yogi Berra ish, by the way. It's very Yogi Berra ish. Yeah, Derek, go away. 
David, yes. David says they're just trying to steal their the Amazon packages. Yeah, and that and that's probably true too. But considering that usually one or both of us are here at Office HD, uh, we don't get our Amazon packages stolen, but just our refrigerated stuff that needs to go like immediately in the refrigerator stays out in the heat entirely too long. That's the biggest one. Because we're working so much, there's there'll be a delivery and it's like, oh, there's the refrigerated thing. And so how long has it been out here? And you hope that, you know, it hasn't spoiled things like that. So, um, yeah, trying to steal your Amazon packages. Can't quite do that here, but they'll sure as you know what, try to get you to sign a petition or get you get a home service from you that uh, you didn't necessarily want. Uh, OK, let's see uh, what to watch, where to watch it. Obviously mentioned League's Cup and everything that's going on there with League's Cup. And uh, we'll go over gossip, rumor, and innuendo before the other stories. There were two stories that I wanted to get into in lower divisions and whatever else is on your mind. Put it in the Twitch pitch. We'll discuss. Uh, what's on TV? What's on TV today? Other than League's Cup. Oh, and by the way, Wayne Rooney after one match where he's, it's now being referred to as uh, Wayne Rooney's Plymouth Argyle. Yeah, they got they got uh, blown out in their first match. Uh, being and being an Espanol, Copa Libertadores tonight. Gremio Fluminense at six, Colo Colo and Junior at eight thirty. Being being an Espanol, you can watch it if you don't have the BNs. You can get that at fanatisfntz.co slash soccer down here. All the BNs, Liga One Max. CDO, Nuestra Tele, for the fans, Goal TV, and our buddy Nino Torres. Nino will come on on Thursday and talk about Libertadores and Sudamericana and anything else going on in his mind. And uh, so Fully Loaded is once again Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern time. So uh, once again, we'll talk Libertadores, but once again, go to Fanatis, FNTZ.co, slash soccer down here, and Jason got me hooked. I blame him. FS2 has the Saudi Super Cup. At 12.15, if you're really interested, Al-Halal and Al-Akli, simulcast on Fox Deportes. Once again, we mentioned season pass and everything that is going on tonight, all seven matches. Jägermeister Cup, Spokane, Northern Colorado. That's at 10 on the plus. One of the stories that uh, I wanted to talk about this morning from a deep dive newsy sense has to do with Northern Colorado, and it's not good. And Paramount Plus has the English Championship, and they've got Monday Night Football. Three o'clock this afternoon, Luton Town and Burnley, the two two of the sides that were relegated last season from the Premier League, squaring off match week one in the championship. Three o'clock, our friend Poppy Miller is, is hosting the coverage from uh, the Paramount Plus studios. And so it's been fun to be uh, watching League One and championship stuff out of the blocks. Thanks to a Paramount Plus to adding to our junky behaviors and watching that. So that's what's uh, going on tonight. Paramount Plus has uh, the uh, championship, Jägermeister Cup in League One, League's Cup, Super Cup in Saudi Arabia, Copa Libertadores. And so that is today. That is the stuff to watch today. Uh, okay. The two pieces of news. Uh, uh, I don't have a, I, I've got a covered garage door. I don't have a, Abby's like, you've got a covered front door though. I don't. It's, it's a front stoop. And so, and we've got a, uh, you know, like a, a front, like a, a front patio, patio or porch, which one patio is the one that uh, doesn't have the roof. So, you know, you come out of the kitchen and you've got the patio. And so Patty and I will sit there and you've got some sh- you've got some uh, shadowed space underneath that in front of the garage door. Just leave it there. Don't leave it out in the sun. If it's a refrigerated package, just leave it in the shade. Don't leave it on the front stoop. We're not going to run it over when we come screaming down the driveway. We'll see it. And it will be in the shade. Uh, okay, so uh, no cover at all in the front. West facing full sun. Yeesh. 1 p.m. till sunset. Uh, I mentioned what's going on. Well, I mentioned Northern Colorado playing tonight in League's Cup. We'll build to that. A couple of stories today in the lower divisions to, to pay attention to. One at 2.30 this afternoon. There's going to be a press conference in Lexington, Kentucky. And by all indications, and folks have leaked screenshots of who's going to be there, 
when the head of USL Championship, Jeremy Allenbaugh, is going to be there, you can kind of figure out what the news is going to be. So at 2.30 this afternoon, especially with all of the, the construction and the building of the, the park complex and everything that uh, Lex SC has been building from day one, you figured that big things were going to be happening in Lexington, Kentucky. So Abby, I think with USL Championships president being there, I think what you're going to see is Lexington SC move from USL League One to USL Championship. They're going to go from League One to Championship, and uh, before Pro Rel is uh, instituted in USL, they're going to jump from League One and start playing in USL Championship. That press conference is set for 2.30 this afternoon. And like I said, when uh, folks are releasing screenshots of who's going to – of the release – and you see on there that Jeremy Allenbaugh is going to be there, the, the major domo for USL Championship, I think we can piece together that, and our friend Kaylor Hodges from the USL show has mentioned this as well, that he thought it was fairly common knowledge that Lexington was going to go to USL Championship. And so we'll try and track down our folks in uh, Lexington once this becomes announced, announced. But 2.30 today at the Complex, that it looks like Lexington SC is going to be leaving League One and self-promoting themselves to USL Championship. Now, the other piece of news is on the other end of the spectrum. Tonight, like we said, Northern Colorado Hailstorm is playing Spokane in the Jägermeister Cup. Not everything is copacetic right now in Windsor, Colorado. And there is a deep dive over at Biz West. And we've reached out to Sharon Dunn, the the author of the article, to let us know if she can come on and discuss. But here's what's going on right now at Northern Colorado. And when you've got this as your first sentence, you know the rest of the article ain't going to be good. Sharon Dunn at Biz West, she writes this. Legal troubles are mounting for the developer of Future Legends Sports Complex, now wrapped up in a host of lawsuits and liens filed against the property for non-payment of services and work performed. Future Legends was supposed to be this 100-acre deal where you've got multiple fields, multiple sports, Everything going on all at once. You know, if you're in the Atlanta area, think of it kind of like Lake Point. So Future Legends, the Future Legends Complex, the Four River Stadium, as, as we talk about on USL, uh, SDH on USL League One every week. 100 acres was supposed to bring in teams, tournaments, tourism, business. Sharon Dunn writes, it's not even halfway completed, the complex. Project is knee-deep in debt, this is her wording, facing more than $13 million in outstanding liens, encumbering the property, more than $9 million in open legal claims in a variety of lawsuits. Owners have recently narrowly avoided the complex being shut down. That's not good when you see stuff like that being written. Meanwhile, according to Dunn, players use the complex's pickleball courts. Hundreds of kids use the facilities daily for soccer and have to use portable toilets. And teams like the NOCO Owls minor league baseball team, Hailstorm and Rain, endure power and lighting issues. The Owls, the minor league baseball team, actually had to cancel their first game back in 2023 after three innings because the stadium had no lighting. And the primary stadium is still unfinished. Windsor officials, uh, Windsor, Colorado officials, quick to point out the town does not have a business relationship with Future Legends owner Jeff Kotofsky, though they do have an agreement with them to run some of the recreation programs you'll excuse me while i take care of a bot so 
That's just the beginning of the article from Sharon Dunn at Biz West. And so obviously, like I said, we've reached out to her to see if she can come on. And we might end up having to do a 1v1 because obviously you're looking at something that is um, going on two time zones away. And, you know, it's an early wake up call uh, to to come on the show unless it's in the 10 o'clock hour. Windsor Town Manager Shane Hale, quote, For us, this whole deal, there's two aspects. One aspect is the economic development side, the tourist attraction of the minor league sports teams, hotels, commercial. All those things are really positive. But the town board was clear when we first entered into the agreement. We also need to maintain recreation facilities for the public. Clearly, everyone is aware there are things going on in the background. I can't speak to that. And they were in constant conversations with Katowski. Spoke with him a couple days ago, monitoring and watching things. Uh, Katowski returned calls to uh, Sharon on Friday, promising that the project would be completed, wouldn't speak to the lawsuits or the financial issues. Katowski, quote, we understand what needs to get done. We'll get it done and everyone will be proud. We'll see a lot of smiling kids' faces. That's the idea. The town of Windsor, however, has only extended the welcome mat for another three months. Officials have spent the last year working with Katowski to bring the complex up to standards that they feel are safe for the public. The facility's temporary occupancy permits are just that. They were due to expire in July, but Windsor Planning Director Scott Ballstadt said the town opted to give them the extra time to fix the many concerns on the clock. Ambitious project to start in 2017. Two major sports stadia, 10 baseball diamonds, 12 soccer pitches, a 64-team dorm, indoor bubble, sports arena, lodging, and retail. That was the original plan. Developers of the park are going to apply for $20 million in funding on clean energy financing. But the county commissioners opted out, sending Katowski scrambling. There were two budgets, assessed value increases. Windsor deeded 50 acres of land to help launch the development. U.S. Department of Agriculture awarded Future Legends a $13 million business and industry loan guarantee two years ago. Construction began back in 19. And so, as uh, Sharon Dunn says, the complex is a hodgepodge of half-completed construction work Stellar soccer fields, one main baseball diamond with several other baseball diamonds covered in weeds. The scoreboard lies on the ground in one field. No functioning lights outside the collegiate stadium or dome and no operating bathrooms outside of the stadium. The concrete walls to what is supposed to be the main stadium are being held up with boards. The dorms are half built with boards covering some windows. No visible work being done on the construction side of the project. And construction materials, as well as generators providing power, are scattered throughout the property. Kids using the big white dome for summer soccer clinics change clothes in portable toilets, which have been on site since opening. No functioning bathrooms there. Contractors say some have used the bathrooms, but there's no running water or functional plumbing. Youth soccer is a real estate game. Quoting uh, one of the... uh, the founder and executive director of the Northern Colorado Lightning Academy, 500 area kids participate in youth soccer leagues. Youth soccer is a real estate game. 75% of the battle is for us to get access to facilities. Not enough soccer pitches in town. When some, when we see something like future legends, we just ask, how can we get in there? Reality is these things have a way of working themselves out. At the end of the day for our needs, we're optimistic. Now to the claims. Katowski and Future Legends started filing into Weld District Court in the Weld County Clerk in 21. Complex opened in 23. Running themes of claims are similar. Future Legends hasn't paid for goods and services for work done on the complex. In many cases, Future Legends denies the claim, blames the vendor. In other cases, it's a waiting game as claimants shuffle through mounts of legal maneuvering failing to find Katowski to serve him with court papers and broken promises. Katowski is a lawyer and he'll represent himself in some cases. 
Knowing that, many contacted for the story refused to comment lest they be sued by Katofsky to make matters worse. So, lawsuits have been filed in district court, local district, county district court, and U.S. district court. Public record. Claimants came. Uh, claimants state Katofsky has had no intentions of paying for work requisitioned for by the company on the complex. Uh, lawsuit filed by Harmony Suites LLC doing business as Cambria Suites. I'm guessing that's the hotel. Seeking over $76,000 in hotel stays for visiting teams. Harmony Suites LLC said that Katofsky knowingly took the goods and services without intending to pay. Lawsuits began with original contractors in all more than 11 more than 11 million dollars in liens have been released since 2021 but there are also 12 open lawsuits claiming more than 9 million dollars in money due more than 13 million in liens that have yet to be satisfied folks are waiting on payments july 3rd lawsuit filed against future legends onset financial inc sued Katofsky Future Legends and Katofsky Family Trust in almost a $7 million claim recently removed from U.S. District Court to U.S. District Court. In it, the claim is Katofsky failed to pay all monthly payments on rental equipment. Katofsky re uh, replied with a 54-page response say, stating that Onset Financial miscalculated the amount due for getting to take off $3.5 million in payments and a cash deposit. Another case. Sport Court had a lien against Katofsky for more than $467,000 for the pickleball court building, the volleyball court, indoor dome flooring, and components. Lien was on the book for four months before Katofsky agreed in a March settlement to repay $425,000 in two payments, first of which was due April 1. A lot of folks will sit there and say, insert irony here. Katofsky didn't pay. By May, the company filed a lawsuit to which Katofsky's attorney answered all by denying all the claims. Sports medical folks uh, sued for over $41,000. Construction company filed one early in the project for over $35,000. So right now, you have individuals who have walked off the gig at Future Legends, investing 800000 of their own money, not being paid for $4.4 in invoices. One guy's like, I'm almost, I'm, I'm out of business. Four and a half million is a lot of money. Future Legends has a lot of work to do to keep their occupancy permits. Several issues needed to be rectified or the town could post the entire site unfit for the public. Issues with the pickleball courts, the collegiate field. All of that. And so uh, Sharon Dunn has reached out to a lot of folks. And there was also talk. That, and this is just stuff that's being reported. That. There were hailstorm players that had not been paid in a timely fashion. So right now, that's where things are with Northern Colorado hailstorm, Northern uh, NoCo Owls, the minor league team that came from Orem, Utah. So this is a story that we're, <coughs> we're going to keep our eye on. Obviously, in League One, you have the... Success of Lex SC, they, you know, the, their payroll right now is more than I think four USL championship teams as it stands. And so at 2.30, it looks like Lex SC is moving to USL championship. Yet on the other side, you have what's going on currently with Northern Colorado Hailstorm and what they're having to battle financially with their facility, with their home facility. And all of the lawsuits that have been placed in and 
Dunn at the bottom of her article. And like I said, we're we're tra- we're going to try and tra- we're tracking uh, Sharon Dunn down to see if we can get her to come in and talk about all of it. Legal matters involving future legends. And right now, the math total open on cases as a defendant is more than $9 million in uh, claimed amounts against future legends. So right now, all of the open suits, $9 million plus total on open cases as a defendant. Liens filed against future legends. And a lot of them are still open. Handful of them have been released, and they date back a while to 2021. $25 million plus in liens. Eleven, More than $11 million have been released. And so right now, according to the local county clerk and recorder, there are still almost $14 million in liens outstanding on the complex. So fourteen million outstanding in liens, and then amounts claimed in lawsuits that are still open is over nine million dollars. That's where things stand right now, involving future legends and Jeff Kotovsky and the Kotovsky Family Trust. So, like I said, as this continues to develop. We'll obviously let you know and continue to to tell you about what's going on there. It's an obvious concern on multiple fronts because you have all of the knock-on effects that we've talked about in the past when uh, franchises like the one in Lansing was a a one-and-done in USL League One and all of the knock-on effects that are attached to it. And we mentioned the, the the, the, the local youth activity that is supposed to be happening there at future legends you know when you have 500 athletes that want to use the facilities and you don't even have functioning bathrooms apparently and you're having to change in porta and porta johns that's not good that's not good for the project that's not good for youth development and you have issues like that that are a part of this and a part of this construction project that is yet to be completed and has a lot of uh, other tentacles going outbound when it comes to financial responsibilities and folks trying to get after the the money that they feel they're owed by Katowski and the Katowski Family Trust. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll let you know what's going on. Like I said, we're trying to track down Sharon Dunn so we can uh, find out more about what it was like for her to chase this story, what it's like for her as she chases this story. And as as things continue to evolve with what's going on in USL League One. So right now, if we look at USL League One on the whole and how it continues to grow, right now you're dealing with 12 franchises and six future clubs. By the way, there's going to be more news out of Naples in the midweek, and we'll see if we can circle back with uh, Bob Moreno and Matt Poland and find out what's going on down there when they make their announcement. But right now, you've got 12 teams. You're going to have, if we anticipate correctly with what's going on in Lexington, you're going to have 11 because Lex SC is going to move up to USL Championship. You're adding Antelope Valley in uh, suburban Los Angeles. And we've had them on, we've had uh, their ownership group on the show. And we've been able to find out what their uh, goals and aspirations are as they renovate the old Lancaster Jethawks uh, baseball stadium. So AV Alta is, gets to be added to the Western Hub. FC Naples and the interviews that we did with Bob Moreno and with uh, Matt Poland is on the, on the network. You can listen to that. FC Naples gets added to the Southern Hub. Portland Hearts of Pine, obviously Portland, Maine, that gets added to the northeastern element. Santa Barbara Sky adds once again to the west. So you're starting to get these these pockets that USL League One started with with the southeastern footprint, and now they're starting to get it in other places. 
So Santa Barbara, AV Alta, Central Valley. You add in Spokane, and so you're starting to get a little bit of Western help there. You've got Northern Colorado, and that's a question mark right now. So we keep an eye on Northern Colorado. You're adding Texoma, which is Sherman Ada Ardmore. That's the the Texas-Oklahoma border in between Dallas and Oklahoma City right there. That's where Texoma is. We need to catch up with them. And then you've also got Westchester Soccer Club to help out in the Northeast to give Portland a dance partner when it comes to travel. So right now, USL League One's got 18 teams coming online, various forms. Lex SC is leaving, so that gives you 17. Still, that gives you six clubs that are coming online in USL League One, and you still have your concerns about Northern Colorado Hailstorm. But you're starting to get the Southern Hubs more filled out. The Western Hub is starting to come together. You're starting to get some folks in the Northeast that are going to be a part of USL League One as well. What is the future of Northern Colorado Hailstorm? That's what we've got to figure out. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on Future Legends and the ballpark. We'll let you know what the latest is there and how things continue to grow with USL League One, especially here in the Southeast. If, as we anticipate, you get Lex SC moving to USL Championship, and like I said, it was pretty much, according to Kaler, it was pretty much anticipated what you were going to see. They'll move into the East, obviously. That'll give them 13 in the East. Right now, they've got 12 in the West. And there's news on Oakland, by the way. So you get Lex moving up. Brooklyn FC is coming online. Sporting Jacks is coming online next year. OKC Energy is coming online. Court Jeske left his position with the league, friend of the show, from his time in Nashville and with the league, and now he's going to Oklahoma City. We probably should catch up with Court and find out what the future is with OKC Energy. And you've also got Milwaukee and Iowa who are coming online in future years. So you end up with 25. Sporting Jacks is coming online. We've caught up with them. And they, and our buddy Steve Livingston has graciously caught up with us. So you're going to end up with 28. 28 in USL Championship next season, adding OKC Sporting in Brooklyn. With Lex SC moving up from USL League One. So you're at 28 in USL Championship. Right now, you are at 17 in League One. Now, like I said, we're, I'm leaving Northern Colorado in at the moment to uh, for the sake of numbers. But you get to see where things are growing. You get to see where things are moving. And you end up with what where things are right now. So interesting news coming out of Lexington. Interesting in not a good way for Northern Colorado. And like I said, we've heard things about players not being paid on time, all of that kind of stuff. So. Next time we have Kaler on, we will discuss this in depth a little more. Unless I have to do a break glass moment with Kaler and have to find out what is up with him uh, and what he knows with his sources. And we'll check with our sources and find out what the level of concern is involving uh, involving the club as we go here. But, yeah, obviously we're going to be uh, keeping an eye on everything involving the financials because of the knock-on effects that are there. It's not it's it's not good when you have these kinds of concerns across the board in uh in all of this. So, that's where we are. Uh doing a quick uh, quick uh search on Eldor, we don't have anything updated outside of the uh the the uh, for some reason it's like something Harry Potterish or V stream team Eldor underscore V. I have no earthly idea what that is, but uh, I'm guessing it's something with V stream. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm sitting here scanning briefly, and looks like there is no update on Eldor yet. 
other than uh, maybe I should put in a last name so I'm not getting all of the um, Shomurodov. Okay, there we go. Um, so the latest, uh, let's see. Observation struggled at Roma. Great goal scoring record for Uzbekistan. Hardworking, experienced. There's a reason Jose Mourinho spent 17 and a half million euro to bring him in in the first place. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see where. Uh, so now in Uzbekistan, as referencing Fabrizio Romano's story, uh, yes, translate to English always. Please translate. Uh, so Shemurodov uh, being referenced. Uh, let's see. So just referencing the Fabrizio Romano report in Uzbek papers. And oh, I got to click the right one. So keeping an eye on, uh, let's see, Shemurodov negotiating. That was the story that we clicked this morning. That was another one that we clicked this morning involving Fabrizio Romano. So a lot of folks right now are still referencing the Fabrizio Romano report about Shemurodov, sorry, Eldor, and not anything outside of Romano and his exclusives. So uh, we'll keep an eye on, let me see what Gazeta Uzbekistan has to say about it and see if it's anything outside of Fabrizio Romano. Abby, thanks for dropping by as always. Great to see you. Uh, but no, it, it looks like right now everyone is pushing to the Fabrizio Romano story. And let's see, Shemurdov, born in 1995 in the Zharkurgan district of the, the Shirkandaria region. Mash Al Club Academy training started his career in the club, later moved to Bunyad Corps, moved to Rostov, 18 and 12 and 91 games. October 2020, striker bought by Genoa for 7.5 million euro, moved to Roma for 17 and a half, played on loan for Cagliari. Okay, so everybody is referencing and circling back to Fabrizio Romano's report. So we'll keep an eye, obviously, on uh, you know, Fabrizio Romano and his deal with Eldor. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Let's check gossip, rumor, and innuendo. Uh, let you know about tomorrow. Tomorrow, once again, uh, Tyler joining us at 9.15. Busiest man in the Northeast. Dylan Butler hopefully joining us at 10 o'clock. Cole Palmer has signed a two-year contract extension with Chelsea until 2033. Liverpool continue to work on signing Martin Zubamendi from Real Sociedad. Uh, we mentioned the Ornstein bit. Fulham have submitted an approved offer to sign Joachim Anderson from Crystal Palace. Uh, let's see, uh, Palmer through June of 2033. Venetius Jr. I don't know if you heard this. Venetius Jr. is being looked at for a nine-figure deal to the left of the decimal place to go to Saudi Arabia. Transfer deal sheet from our friends at The Athletic. Aaron Ramsdale is being courted by Ajax. Arsenal has already said no once. We'll see what happens there with uh, with Ramsdale. That got into a deep dive. Eddie and Ketcha is among the options Bournemouth are looking at after the Solanke exit. Bournemouth now have uh, Nketiah on their list of options. Marseille were pursuing Nketiah before shifting their focus to Eli Wahi of Lens, according to Ornstein. Everton progressing with a deal to sign Burton Albion youngster William Tommen. 18-year-old center back impressed on a trial with the club's U21s, hoping to wrap up a move. Watford agreed uh, to a fee in the region of £25 million with Wren for Yasser Aspria, left it down to the player to decide. Offer came with an expiry date, which has now passed. QPR advanced talks to sign Karamoko Dembele from Brest. The deal for the former Celtic winger would include a £1.4 million option to buy. After a move to Dortmund, Lyon are fielding alternative inquiries for Ryan Cherky. Attacking midfielder appeared to be headed to Germany in a deal worth the region of 15 million euro. League us suitors are now waiting for another present proposal. Alex Mighton is set to leave Nottingham Forest this summer, and the club are prepared to review options for the 22-year-old winger. But yeah, Venetius Jr., that's a wild one. It's like 11 gazillion dollars, nine figures, to go to the Saudi League. And apparently, he is seriously considering it. 
So, yeah, Saudi Pro want Vinicius Jr. Targeted by the Saudi Pro League, Real Madrid's uh, Vinicius Jr. Targeted by Saudi Pro. And uh, talks between the PIF and Real Madrid about the move. PIF owns 75% of the capital of the country's four main clubs, al Akli, Al-Idhihad, Al-Halal, and al Nasser. The Saudis approached Vinicius Jr.'s representatives and discussed an annual salary of up to 350 million euro. 382 and a half million bucks. Player hasn't dismissed the idea. Remember, Real Madrid would expect to receive Vinicius' buyout clause, which is 1 billion euro. Forward's contract at the Bernabeu runs until June 27. Source close to the player told Real Madrid would need to accept a transfer fee below the value of the release clause for the deal to go through. Uh, yeah, so less than a bill. What's the, what's the transfer? What's the uh, buyout clause? A billion, a billion euro. Yeah, that's not going to work for us. Well, what's the, what's the, what's the buyout clause? A billion euro for Vinicius Jr. And it being offered a salary of about a third of that, three hundred eighty-two and a half million dollar salary. So that's Vinicius Jr.'s latest. Manchester United and keep an eye out for the 3D every single Friday with uh, our buddy Drew. Manchester United have held internal discussions over signing a number of forwards, including Everton's Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Southampton agreed to a 15 million euro deal to sell center back Armel Belakotchap to Hoffenheim, medical scheduled for today. Napoli made an offer worth 25 million euro plus five in bonuses for Romelu Lukaku. That's from Gianluca Di Marzio, a tier A source. Newcastle looking at alternative options for a center back despite submitting a third bid to sign Mark Gahey from Crystal Palace. Palace also monitoring the situation of Chelsea midfielder Carney Chukwemeka will make an offer if the Englishman becomes available. Bournemouth have had an offer for Evan Ilsen, rejected by Porto. Switched their attention to Eddie and Ketcha. We mentioned that. Newcastle set to target Chelsea's Noni Madweki if Eddie Howe's side sell, uh, sells Miguel Almiron to Charlotte. We already talked about that one. Uh, Liverpool received a third bid from Red Bull Salzburg for midfielder Bobby Clark. Austrian side had an £8 million uh, pound offer for the Englishman rejected. New offer expected to be closer to 10 which is the asking price. Chris Meppham expected to leave Bournemouth this summer on either a permanent or a loan. Ipswich, Torino, and Anderlecht all interested. Fabrizio Romano again. Leicester have reached an agreement with Bayer Leverkusen on a loan with an obligation to buy on their striker, Adam Lozek. Foxes still need to agree to terms with him. United have reopened talks with Everton over signing Jared Branthwaite for 60 million pounds. Have you heard that one before? Manchester City willing to let Calvin Phillips leave on loan. Ipswich, Everton, and Fulham are all interested. Forrest closing in on the signing of Paraguayan striker Ramon Sosa from Tacheras. The 24-year-old would be worth around 11 million pounds. Villa Fulham and Palace all in the race to sign Trevor Shalaba from Chelsea. Tottenham striker Dane Scarlett set to join Oxford United on loan. He's already made 10 appearances for Spurs. That is gossip, rumor, and innuendo on the day. So uh, tomorrow, once again, here's the, the layout of the week. We're tracking down champions. We'll see if our friends from Soda City, who won the UPSL in Pittsburgh over the weekend, can catch up with us. We'll find out what it was like to be the number three team in your division, make it into the playoffs when you weren't supposed to, make a run. You beat Inland Empire in Pittsburgh on Sunday afternoon. You win a title in the UPSL. So we're tracking down them as champs. We're also tracking down a lot of our, our collegiate content because the college season is up and running. For the most part, it'll be up and running this weekend to start. In a lot of the uh, the top, uh, the Go Five, the, the Group of Five, and the Division One Power Five conferences. So we're going to check in with a lot of the Georgia schools, regardless of division, NAIA, Division Two, II, Division One, all across the board. Uh, we caught up with Georgia State, uh, Jason and Maddie did on Media Day. And so we'll find out about Georgia State and life in the fun belt. You can go back into our archives and listen to those interviews. Like I said, tomorrow it's Tyler and hopefully Dylan Butler, 9, 15, and 10. It is fully loaded with Nino. Thursdays with Nico at 10 and 10.30 on Thursday. Our friends from Beyond Goals at 9.30 on Friday and getting you ready for the weekend as we go. A uh, quick reminder from me specifically, I will be on the road and doing the show from, let me see if I can remember the, the order of things. Uh, okay, so... Thursday, the show will be from Cordial in a hotel room because of the 
stuff that uh, I'm doing for Georgia Public, and that's kind of running together. We have to do some more sponsor segments. Doing one outside of Cordial on Thursday. We go from there to Bainbridge. And then after Bainbridge is done, I'm driving back up to Columbus because I don't want to drive five hours back to Atlanta on a Friday. So the Friday show will be done from the hotel room in Columbus that we were at last week. And so Thursday's in Cordial in a hotel. Friday is in Columbus in a hotel as I get ready for our season premiere football Fridays on GPB. So I'm traveling the state the day before we have our season premiere. So Thursday in a hotel room in Cordial, Friday in a hotel room in Columbus, but the guests are still the same. And we just um, praying that the Wi-Fi continues to work and we'll have uh, all the stories that are there uh, as well. So once again, thanks for hanging out with us. And I know that Tuesdays kind of have the, uh, the, the more newsy feel sometimes. And that's, you know, what I, what I'd like, what I like to do sometimes is sit there and let everybody know what's going on with other stories and other deep dives and things like that stuff that uh, we think we should all know about and think it's important. So we'll keep an eye on Eldor. We'll keep an eye on the deadline. We'll keep an eye on anything else that's going on in major league soccer. We got leagues cup tonight, got a lot of stuff going on and we'll be back at it again tomorrow morning at 9.05 Eastern time. So back in a little less than 22 to let you know what's going on through everything uh, in the world of soccer. As always, thanks for dropping by here on Soccer's Morning Show on the SDH Network. I'm just John. It's time to whistle us out of here for yet another day. Good day.